All right. So before we get started again, this is, I'm not a doctor. I don't know anything. Don't do anything that I ever tell you at any point in time for any reason. It's a terrible idea. I'm not going to cure anything. Today, we're going to talk about um, just general good, healthy advice. That's going to be super effective. Uh, and that's uh, quick and easy. So now we're going to go over everything that we've got here and give you the first assignment. All right, can everybody sh uh, see my screen that I just shared? Give a okay. thumbs up or something. Yes. All right, cool. So what we're doing is building your system to make sure that you can burn fat, as much fat as you want, and keep it off long-term easily. So this is building your system. And what we're going to do is progress on it every single week and get more in-depth and more detailed with each piece. The pieces will grow. More pieces will be involved. Where your setup is will change and grow as you change and grow. So it's constantly going to build on itself. So this is a smaller version of our overall health and fitness pyramid that we want to build on to be successful. And it works just like any other pyramid would work. If I'm building everything at the top and not f filling out that base, that structure at the bottom, eventually it's going to all topple down or it's just not going to work. You can't build it higher if the base doesn't get wider, more solid. And it's going to give us a really good visual of how to build this out and what key points to hit and what to address before we move on to the next one. And as you fill in the pieces from the bottom up, everything gets easier, better, faster. It makes more sense. There's a lot less decision making. There's a lot less to figure out, a lot less problems to solve and it makes everything easy. So this right here is a small shrink, a smaller example. Purpose, psychology, environment as the base of the pyramid, which are super important. Then we have nutrition, conditioning, body control, and strength. There's more. It'll grow and change. But this is the base that we're starting with. And I'm going to break down what is in each layer that we want to hit. And I'm going to do it really quickly. So if you have questions, think about them and ask them. Purpose. So filling out a bottom layer of understanding what your purpose is and what we're trying to do here. So we have four questions that have to be answered. Why do you want to do this? Whatever it happens to be that you want to do, why? Why do you want to do it? And why is it important to you? Both why do you want to do it? Why is it important that you do it? And why is it important all of your whys? I want to be healthy for as long as I can to be around for my kids. Why is that important to you? And then elaborate on it. Why are the important things the important things? And what are your main priorities and values and why did you choose those? This is the base for everything that we're going to build off of it. If I want to be able to do hiking and outdoor rock climbing with my kids until I'm 100 years old, doing AMRAPs with heavy deadlift and heavy snatch is probably a terrible idea that doesn't fit with my why, what's important to me and what my values are. So everything that I'm doing becomes detrimental and works against itself. Psychology, this part's unbelievably important, particularly when we get to what do you believe your odds of success are? When you look at key things like, what is your identity? How do you identify as a person? What are your dream goals and outcomes? What are your key values? What's your priority list that you have? What motivation level are you? Those all increase the odds of success with more than enough studies to justify that any human being on the planet should use them no matter how they feel about them. So who are you? What is your identity? I asked people a few weeks ago to choose a new identity that they were going to, or this first step of a new identity that they wanted to adopt that will help them with everything that they're trying to do. And that new identity is super simple and super small. Something like, I'm the type of person who doesn't miss workouts. That's the type of person I am. That identity, that mentality pushes you to show up for more workouts than if you did not have that mentality, especially if your identity is and who you are is somebody who struggles to lose weight. If that's your identity, then you're always going to struggle to lose weight. So what you want to do is start to write out who are you and what is your identity. And the more of those statements that you can make, the better. I'm the type of person that always eats vegetables because I know that they make me feel good. I'm the type of person who doesn't miss workouts. I'm the type of person who makes sure they have a meal plan organized ahead of time for decision making. I'm the type of person who, if you don't have at least five, you're struggling. Dreams, goals, 
or uh, it's rather dream goals and outcomes. In a perfect world, what exactly do you want to accomplish in as much detail as possible? If your goal is to be at X amount of weight and that's it, you need to elaborate a ton. Um, what do you believe your odds of success are? If you're like, you know, this has a 20% chance, not good. Motivation level, on a scale from one to 10, how motivated are you to do it? Make a list of your priorities. What are they? And then we're gonna do the 25 and five. So um, if you don't know what that is, it'll be fun, but you need an actual physical list of your priorities and a physical list of your key values filled out. Environment. This is where we're tweaking and improving our environment. So sleep. We talked about the main sevens, getting seven hours of sleep per night. But the first priority before we worry about getting seven hours of sleep is our sleep setting, which under the environment category. And that means, are you watching TV in bed? Are you texting in bed? Do you have lights on? in bed what is your pre-bed routine what is the temperature what is your pillow like what is the process that you do to get in and get out of bed and if there are issues with that then you need to start to tweak and improve their environment around sleep to improve your sleep hygiene sometimes it's impossible for us to get seven hours like i'm going to be at home for six hours from the time i leave here to the time i have to get up to come back it's impossible to get seven but i can still improve my sleep by perfecting my sleep setting Identify five habit loops to use. We talked about habit loops a number of times. If you find five habit loops that you can build from, then we can build all the things that you want to do, attach them to those habit loops and make them a lot easier. Uh, positive slash plus home tweaks. Positive means a change you made that was a positive. Plus means something you added to your home. So little things. Uh, and in the future, I have um, negative home tweaks, which is like get rid of the candy. Uh, but positive ones would be like, putting your pre-cooked vegetables in the front top center shelf of the refrigerator, putting the pantry items that are healthy in the front top center of the house, buying new things, shuffling things around, uh, making the things that you want to do easier, setting your workout clothes and shoes in your bag that you take to work or setting them directly in front of uh, your path in and out, whatever it happens to be. A physical scoreboard. If you don't have a physical scoreboard, I don't care what you're doing never going to work. Uh, set your social support. So you have it at home, you have it with a spouse, you have it with friends, whatever it happens to be, and you can find it at the gym. And if you don't know and don't have it, then you let me know and we build it. And this is where we set our intentions and our pre-commitments. Dana just pre-committed to showing up tomorrow at 5 a.m. And if she says her intention is to work out Fridays at 5 a.m., she's more likely to show up by doing that. It's positive public peer pressure. It's a healthy kind of accountability. If you cannot explain this to me, it's not good. And then your plans, specific detailed written plans for how you plan on improving 1% every day and only 1%. Here's the basics for nutrition. These all have to be checked off or filled in as green before you move on to anything or ask me any other questions. Eating a heavy, a healthy fat, heavy on protein breakfast. And remember, Breakfast is just breaking the fast. It doesn't mean you have to eat it before you go to work. It just means your first meal of the day should have minimal or no carbs. It should have a good amount of healthy fat and be heavy on the protein side. If that's not the first thing that you're doing every day, that's an issue. If you're not eating 700 grams of veggies, that's a problem. Uh, 0.7 grams per pound of body weight of protein. 80% of the food that you consume is real food. And then 70 ounces of water per day. Conditioning, two of them are blank on purpose because those will pop up later. If you're not getting 10,000 steps per day, that's your priority. If you can't row 1,500 meters in 10 minutes or less with perfect technique, run 1.5 miles in 18 minutes and run a 5K in under 40 minutes, your training should be based around this first and foremost. Body control, you have to pass the purple level flexibility test that's here in the gym because everybody on the call is here in the gym. Stability test, can you hang from the rig for 30 seconds? Do a proper front leaning rest for 30 seconds, a bent hollow hold for 60, a wall sit for 30, overhead hold 50% of your body weight for 30 seconds. Ladies, that would be 30% for you. Uh, box dip holds where you hold yourself up on the boxes like you're doing a dip for 15 seconds. Then the movement test, can you do one proper push up from the floor, one proper pull up, 10 full depth astagrass air squats with your torso in a good position five proper kettlebell deadlifts, five proper good mornings, and one horizontal, completely horizontal ring row. It's just technique. If your technique is not perfect 10 out of 10, you don't pass. Strength, body control. 
uh, five push-ups for men or five push-ups for ladies, 10 for the men, one pull-up for the ladies, three for the men, 30 consecutive air squats in 90 seconds. Kettlebell deadlift, 15 unbroken reps with 53-pound kettlebells, 26-pound kettlebell for 10 reps of good mornings, and horizontal ring rows, just two of them would be the proper strength test. And that's all that I put on the pyramid for now. So here's a visual of what it would look like, okay? I need, think I need to end the presentation to fill it in. Now, if we're looking at our pyramid, which each and every one of you is going to have a pyramid that's specifically based off of you, and we have our categories, body control, conditioning, nutrition, environment, psychology, and purpose. Notice purpose is at the bottom, psychology is next, and we want to fill it from the bottom up. So have you written out on a card or on a big piece of paper behind you something that you can see and read every single day that says why you want to do this? If you have, you'd fill it in green. Uh, why is it important to you? Why are the important things important things? And what are your main values and priorities? If you don't have a physical list of those that you look at every day, every day, it's not green. If it's not green, it's a problem. Who are you? What's your new identity? If you don't have that scripted and written, what are exactly are your dream outcomes in enough detail? What are your odds of success? If you don't think your odds of success are now 100%, then it's not a green square, it's red and so on and so forth. You get the point. Now, as we're looking at this right here, and we go up and I wrote some questions here on the right hand side. How many carbs should I have per day? When we set up all of this that I just said, that's one of the first questions that people ask me, which is better, this thing or that thing? Is this particular thing bad for me? How many calories should I be aiming for? Or they make comments like I need to work on my snatch technique. I need to work on uh, my clean and jerk. I need to be able to keep up with this person in the gym. And hey, Michael, what are your thoughts on keto? Anybody can jump in at this point and answer these questions for me. How would I answer these questions or how did the pyramid that needs to be filled in first answer these questions? Anybody? Nobody? They're irrelevant at this point. They're completely effing irrelevant. How many carbs should you eat per day? I don't give a shit, excuse my language. But if you ate a protein and fat or a healthy fat, heavy protein breakfast with no carbs, you fit in 700 grams of vegetables and 0.7 grams per pound of body weight on protein. 70% of your food was real and you drank at least 70 ounces of water. I don't care how many carbs you end up eating. Like there's no list of good foods and bad foods at this point. Right now we're talking about odds of success. And this pyramid right here, this is just phase one. And if this one is 100% green, you're guaranteed to have everything you need to be unbelievably healthy and become a fat burning system. Are there little tweaks if you wanna look like a figure model or a bodybuilder? Sure, that's on more advanced stages, but for every single person on this call and every single goal that you've had in terms of body weight from anybody on here who said anything to me, you get there from this alone. So asking questions outside of it doesn't matter, right? So here's another couple of examples. I'll just copy this green one here. So we fill in, we're like, hey, I'm trying to do more push-ups. I'm trying to be able to do this Metcon. I'm trying to do blah. And then they ask, hey, Michael, what do you think about this? Can I work on my snatch technique? I need to beat Clint in the gym. And they're leaving all of this shit blank. And if I started filling them all in as red and problems, it would probably make everything a whole lot more clear for you. You can see I'm doing my artwork on the call. <laughs> If you don't have these things, they're red. So what you're trying to do and build up here is completely irrelevant. These questions don't matter. And the reason people struggle and fail and can't move forward is because they're worried about so many of these things instead of just this stuff right here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Who had a mm -hmm. question? Somebody tried to ask a question during that. What does 700 grams of vegetables look like? Um, so a, a, like a salad bowl of salad that has is filled with lettuce that lettuce is going to be like 125 grams of lettuce. But broccoli is going to be heavier in terms of grams than lettuce. And peppers are going to be heavier. And carrots are going to be heavier. So you want to eat as much greens as you can. And you want to get to 700 grams. What it's going to look like is going to vary by which vegetables you chose. OK. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh I have a question. 
Let's hear it. About the 0.7 grams of protein per pound. Yeah. <laughs> How often do you adjust that if you're losing weight? Well, we want it to be more aimed towards our lean mass than our total mass. Like, let's say somebody's 300 pounds, but their lean mass is 120 pounds. We would be basing it off of the 120, not the 300. Okay. So in that, in that example, Kim, um, that person, their weight would start coming off. But if they're training like we assign you guys to train and they're eating like this, their lean mass is likely to go up. If they're going to build muscle, right? So their protein, even though they're 300 pounds, would probably go up. And if you're eating mostly real food, you're following the guidelines that we want you to do, and you aim for 300 or 30%, so you know 210 grams of protein per day, um, that only works more in our favor, not less, because you're going to be full on healthier proteins. You're going to feel better. But it's not a failure to fall short of 0.7 grams per pound of body weight when we have a big discrepancy between our body weight, our overall body weight, and our lean mass. Does that make sense? She's muted, yes. but she, yeah, there we go. Excellent. <laughs> Other questions that you guys have right now? How do we get this chart? Uh, this chart I just made like 20 minutes ago. Um, so everybody that's on this call right now is going to get an opportunity to uh, speak to me one-on-one. -on -one and, uh, and I build your chart for you, with you. Okay. Now, I'll ask the hard question. What happens if you're not very, like for your purpose and your psychology, attuned to yourself to get those questions answered. That's the point of asking the questions and then requiring them to be answered in terms of building a pyramid, right? So this is an absolute. So let's like, um, you have to hit five standards to graduate. Doesn't matter what example you want to put there. You have to hit these particular five standards to graduate. And uh, we'll say math. You have to be able to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and uh, use a calculator. And you're just like, I love all of this, but I'm just like, I'm just not really into division. What do I do? And it's like, these are the standards that you have to hit. So then we have to find a way to get into division. So for you, you'd have to find a way to find a way to get in tune with yourself that is distinctly and uniquely you. And the easiest way to do that is to just start writing things down. So this is something I'm gonna to say to you guys a bunch. The reason you don't like something is because you haven't done it enough to like it. The reason you're not good at it is probably because you haven't done it enough to be good at it, but everybody understands that. I'm not good at it because I don't do it, but what most people don't buy into is that I don't like it because I don't do it enough. So you just start doing it. So for Kim, I'd say that's totally fine. There is no golden standard or process to answering some of the psychology questions. It's very individual and unique. So on our one-on-one, -on -one, we'll talk about it. But for you, I'd be like every day, just write the type of person, I'm the type of person who, or I'm becoming the type of person who, and it's just an aspiration. And then you can write what you think your values are and then look at your own decisions and make adjustments as you go. It doesn't matter too much because they're not set in stone. They will evolve and change. What matters is that you are setting them and thinking about them and reviewing them because there will be a day for everybody on the list where you're like, I absolutely do not feel like doing X, Y, and Z. But if you've written down, I'm the type of person who does X, Y, and Z, and Michael, your coach is expecting you to do X, Y, and Z because I know you're supposed to do X, Y, and Z, then every, all the 10 people on this call know that you're supposed to do it. You're going to do it because that's the type of person you are. And it starts to reinforce it. And enough studies show that that works in a large degree for a lot of people. So if you are just like the mentally strongest human being on the planet, it's still going to work for you. And if we're, you know, playing the odds, like one of the key principles, like start thinking in bets, start thinking in odds. If that's going to increase your odds, it's worth writing a sentence. So that's at the top of your workout journal. So that would be my advice to get that started, to grow that so that you can turn that square from red to green. Does that make sense? Yes. 
Excellent. Other questions? All right. So I am personally out of time. I got to be back in this gym in like three hours, it seems like. So this presentation is going to be posted. The, okay. So you can go back and you look at this and the slides will be, I have help um, tomorrow morning. So don't worry. This will be loaded up tomorrow morning with this. We'll schedule our one-on-one -on -one check in here's your homework assignment fill in slash answer everything that i just said even if you write i don't know yet but you have to have it and you're turning it in like a worksheet in school that's how we're going to do it so for this stuff you answer the questions for this stuff you answer the questions for environment you answer the questions and sometimes the questions are or the answers are my sleep environment is terrible and i did nothing to improve it I need to know in order to help you, right? I have no plans for improvement. I have none of this, I have none of this. And then we, we build it from there, no big deal. For nutrition, do you do this or not? Then what's your plan? Conditioning, do you do this or not? Body control, I need to test it if you don't know. And you just, just as simple as that. And that's how we build the base here. And then you build plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Now, if you do exactly this and prioritize it this way, you're going to notice before you begin anything, before you begin a plan, a program, a diet, a workout thing, that fat is going to start falling off your body. If your priorities or focus are not on filling this pyramid, whoops, I think I was at the right spot, filling this pyramid diagonally bottom up, if your focus is not there, you're not going to make nearly as much progress. It's not going to stick. It's not going to work. But if you do, it works before you even get started with anything, which is what makes it super fun. Questions? <coughs> you have more questions, call me, text me, let me know. Oh, somebody started asking one, go ahead. So when you're saying you want us to turn this in, like when? Uh, text it or email it. Okay. Or have a physical piece of paper for our meeting even if it's a Zoom call or a phone call, as long as you have a physical piece of paper. I don't care how you do it. When you get it to me at first, then we'll build it from there. Um, simple as that. If you send it as a text or an email, it is in the cloud somewhere. We'll find it. Okay. All right. I will be texting all of you, giving you different updates um, of things to come next week when William's back in school. Text me if you need anything. I'll see a bunch of you in the morning. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thanks. See ya.